15. World Rugby Sevens Player of the Year. He's been ruled out. The referee is James Dolman from New Zealand. Cecil Africa and Kyle Brown are both on the edge of this back in South Africa. Henry Hutchison, four tries already. Greg Clark with you alongside me. Greg Martin. Whoa, bring it on. Expectations were low going into this tournament for this Australian team. They're so young. Three of them making their debuts in the last two weekends in the starting seven. So Stenart gets this underway. Good steady take from Cocker Smith in his final tournament before he heads to the Lions in Super Rugby. Penalty goes against Australia. So Dry takes it quickly. And Dupria turning it back to Hedolt, who's been in very good form. Sinatla. They can't give him any space, but the support play is good from Dry. This is a wonderful build-up now. Dupria getting the pass away. What a start, South Africa. Quokka Smith. Got the penalty, and now they've got the five points with a kick to come. Terrific start. Oh, within 14 passes, South Africa has shown the young Australian team. This is what it takes to be the number one team in the series. Head on. Gives it to Sinatla, normally the flyer. He's also rugged when the conditions are robust. Chris Dry gives it to Dupria. Look at them keep going, but watch them streaming down the inside and finally to Quagga Smith. Wonderful stuff, just the centre. You normally see him doing the gritty stuff in the middle. Pleased to get a try for a change for all reward for all his hard work. The Australians, they think they're confronting 10 South Africans. They just kept passing. So that's one way to take the crowd out of the equation. And there is the extra two from Branko de Priya. So seven points to nil. Cocker Smith is second for the weekend. He's now scored 52 tries. Was part of the Wellington Dream Team last week. And he's finishing strongly again here on the final day in Sydney. South Africa. They're going for six in a row against Australia. Australia's last win was in a cup semi-final in Las Vegas last year. It's the seventh time they've been in a cup semi-final. Believe it or not, Australia lead in the head-to-head -head in the semis by four wins to two. Still a long way to go. They just need to regroup now, the Australians. And McDermott gets it to Hutchison, who straightens. And back on the angle run is Gibbon. He's taken there by Sinatla, dry over Knock the top. Advantage. Knocked on by the South Africans. So we'll have a scrum about five from halfway. The Aussies thought the going was tough when South Africa had the ball. They're the best defensive team in this competition, the South Africans. They're forwards. There he is, Chris Dry on screen. They're Captain Snayman and Quagga Smith, number four there. They work so hard. They only conceded seven points in their first two games, down in Japan 32-0 yesterday, Kenya 14-7. But then they lost 21-15 to England. Sit. So that was a hiccup for them. And they bounce back strongly to beat the USA 21-10 in the cup quarter-final earlier. Australia beat Wales 26-0. Good strong carry by the 18-year-old McDermott. And now, Anstey, has he got the pace to get away? Being chased, Anstey for the corner! Australia score a magnificent try! Tim Anstey, three tries yesterday within the space of three minutes and again he shows his true pace because the Priya is no slouch and he got faster the further it went those enormous legs look at this you get an 18 year old McDermott takes it up and then Anstey a 19 year old streaks away from the best sevens team in the world to level it up one try apiece Tim Anstey what a weekend nobody knew who Tim Anstey was before this now they can't get enough Andy Friend, the uh, Aussie coach, knew who Tim Anstey was. He went searching for some youth and he found it. And so Stannard's conversion from out wide, not his best shot this weekend, but they've hit back and it's 7-5. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Tim Anstey's just left the field, I think, for a concussion test following that uh, that try. We'll try and get an update on that one, but uh, a long kickoff by Australia on that occasion, hoping to pin South Africa down inside their own territory. But Branko Dupria 
has other ideas and he sends it down. The sweeper. Oh, this this will show the attitude. How many players get back? How many Aussie players get back with Stanard? Well, Stanard flings one over the top. So Anderson goes to ground. Now it's Hutchison asking some question. Hutchison through the gap. Offloads. Adams. Adams trying to get on the outside of Dry. He kicks it oh. back in field. The chase is on. Head off. Did he take it back? No. Gets to his feet. And the penalty goes against the chaser. Alex Gibbon. Oh, Gibbon's got him. A lot of the crowd are booing. They don't understand. You can't get him in a neck roll, no matter whether it's an accident or not. He's got him around the neck, and that's what they're trying to stamp out of the game for safety's sake. Stiff. Wow. Mick Adams down the sideline with a stutter, stutter step and then an, a, a, a midfield kick, centre field kick. You wonder how this young Aussie team had coped. They're coping magnificently in the first six minutes. It'll be a line out inside Australian Territory. South Africa to throw in. This is the business end of the half. Where those old hard heads up front in the line out will squeeze the Aussie boys and then they're speed out wide. In the three previous events in this World Series, South Africa appearing in every final, winning two and losing one. They lost to England in their home final in Cape Town. Second stop of 10. And the winner of this one will play England in the decider here in Sydney at the HSBC Sevens. And strong oh. tackle. And it's going to come back for South Africa now. You're playing the ball, the, ah. the ball on the ground. Well, the Australians are just going to have to keep an eye on the laws and not allow South Africa to piggyback their way upfield. Penalty's conceded three already. Yeah, it's a matter of timing. Reached out there. Thought he was still time to do it. Dupria. Giving it to Hedog, who's been in great form. And now Smith across to Sinatla. Smith. Dupria. He's kicking ahead for the chasers out wide. And Stenard has to get back. The sweeper. The race is on. Nell claiming Stenard straight away. Penalty goes against Australia. It was a beautiful chase by the South Africans. Holding on as a call. No one back there. Stenard blowing up at the referee, but on the line. I've never known a referee to change his decision. Yeah, time to defend, not to argue. It probably bought his team a couple of seconds, though. So now, Dupria. Close to half time. Out to Sanatla. And Ciabello Sanatla. Gots it down. His eighth try, matching his eight tries that he scored in Wellington. And that's what they can do to you. That's the poise. That's the poise that comes from a team that's played together this much. So Stanard, not many options. He waited for a player to get there. Got support. But of course, look at that lying all over it. He's trying to lay the egg. Adams helped, but that's where the penalty came. And then it's quick sticks. There was no obstruction there. And they knew St. Atlas out wide. And with uh, five metres, you can't match him. Another one to his tally. The doll from out wide hits the post. So that is half time in the Cup semi final, the race for the gold medal. And it is South Africa leading Australia by 12 points to five. Two degrees, it's wonderful. Second half underway. Can the Aussies break this five game losing streak against the Blitzbox? Nell makes the tackle on Hutchison. Adams. Crossfield he goes, trying to pick up the youngster, and they were playing advantage. It was a high tackle, so Anderson couldn't control it, but they'll come back for the penalty. That's the tactic they're called upon by Andy Friend. Coming back on the angle, you won't get around them. And uh, that one is into touch, picking up some good metres there. James Stenard. 
That'll be one of his best tournaments of recent seasons, Chucky Stenard. The word reliable, that's the one. Such a dependable person to have when you've got so many young players, you need an old hand like this man, Stenard. So Stenard across to McDermott, and now Hutchison showing going, but uh, Hedolt didn't fall for the dummy. Super defence. And advantage. advantage is being played here. Offside. No, didn't take it on the mark. Have to come back and that will allow South Africa now to reset their defensive line. So he might put it into the corner. They like to play their set moves off the line outs and that's another good touch find up. So they'll take the line out. Even a 12 metres out. Tim Anstey is back on the sideline, we're told, but his uh, boots are off, so he may have failed that concussion test, which is a shame for the youngster. But McDermott gives it to Hutchison. Hutchison can't dance his way through. It pops out for McDermott, who throws the dummy, taken by Chris Dry, who's over the ball, and there's the extra roll, and that's just a rookie error. Roll the extra roll to try and buy a bit more time. And so, when you get into the 22 against the blitz box, you've got to come up with some points, but now... We're going to... Uh, we call back, I think, for a forward pass, but now a yellow to Mick Adams as well. So they're down a man, Australia, and they're down youngster Tim Anstey, who scored the early try through injury. Yeah, a lifting tackle, oh, that's reckless. That is reckless. Yeah. Forward pass if you're wondering why, but they get the penalty. Dylan yeah. Sage call back. Adding yellow insult to his injury. Now is the South Africans chance. The Aussies have got to work harder than ever with only six players. Anstey on the sideline. What a prospect he is. Young man with a huge motor plus speed. That's why we've got the break. Two 18 year olds, four 19 year olds, one 20 year old in the Australian squad. Still got uh, the likes of Nick Maloof and Tom Lucas and Lewis Holland and Ed Jenkins, Jesse Powder here to come back from Tim, the injury list. Tim. 22 Tim. players have been used by it's Australia yellow. Yellow. in the three previous events and now this one. So they're down a man. Mick Adams, because of that lifting tackle, the tackle that went wrong. I'm sure he didn't mean to do it, but he's just got to be careful nowadays. They're right onto that one, the referees. Head on. Starts to move. Wide ball running onto it is dry. It's a big man and he's got some pace, but this time Gibbon comes across and makes the tackle. Head on. Hutchison over the ball. It pops out for Australia. And now Stenard. Sinatla. Stenard. Pull down from behind by Speckman. Stenard. Now it's McDermott back into Gibbon. Gibbon, desperate defence by the blitz box. And Taylor. They set it up again. Gibbon. This is Anderson. Stannard. Play. Play on is the call. Oh, there's a terrible trip here. He's gone. Oh, James Stannard's been yelling the whole game. Well, they're down to five now, Australia. Oh, they needed a score. The problem is Tate McDermott is injured as well. He was out on his feet, didn't participate, so they're already playing like a five. He's still hurt. They've actually got four and a half out there. This is certain try time. Cynical play, the call, and now the Blitzbox can really seal it now. There's the wide ball, but it's a shocker. Oh, did it stay in? Oh, hold on. They're saying yes, and Dry comes away with it. Crowd not too happy about it, but Chris Dry, he has no complaints. The referee has no complaints. And so it is 17 points to five with the kick to come. Well, it was brilliant play if it's true, but... Snayman, that was super stuff to keep the ball in play because an error would have done them over. Let's have a look. Assistant referee was right there. 
And he let go of the ball. Yep. And he let go of his boot. Yep. Away you go. Five points. Brilliant stuff. And that's the poise that they've got. Chris Dry takes it off his skipper to run around under the post. They were only up against five Aussies, but they did the job. You had to score from there. Great try and great work from the officials as well. Australia, back to six players. 19 points to five. South Africa looking like they're heading for another it's decider. What a start to the HSBC Sevens World Series it has been for them. That'll be four finals in four events. And they find touch about five out from the Australian line. Class act, head up. Lovely stuff from Justin Heddle. There are gaps because there's only uh, six Aussies on the field. A few changes now. Yeah, they need a break. Six is coming on for South Africa. So here we saw a swappy. The man known as Shakes, and he's out there for Sinatla. Time on. We will see the Australians again. If it stays like this, they will be in the bronze medal playoff against old rivals New Zealand and Australia if they want to pull off a miracle here need to go coast to coast I'm nervous Brandon Quinn just on good line out throw Ball is oh, out. Quagga Smith just comes through and steals it they looked at it and Quagga Smith in his final tournament before heading off to Super Rugby he has got a double that's two tries while there's been men off the field. They're one man short. That's the problem. Go to the breakdown. Quinn did the right thing. Clearer, cleaner came in. Ball sitting there. Quaker Smith, quite simply, the, the receiver just didn't get there in time and Smith scooped it up. So, another look at here. Just having a look there. Are there any of those arms above the shoulders? The referee was happy with it. Walker was pretty happy to see it out there as well. And the extra two. So, comprehensive in the end. It doesn't take much. When, when the try's worth seven points each, when you convert two of them, while the Aussies were down to five and six men, it's a tough thing. They've learned a lot of lessons here, whether or not they're enough when they come up against the New Zealanders in their final match of the day, the Australians. And they've done their job. They've given the home fans plenty to cheer about. And there will be another match as well in South Africa and England in the decider. Wow, what a match that is going to be. A replay of the decider in Cape Town, won by England. And have they got enough left in the tank to do it again to South Africa? So Australia still running strongly. Good tackle from Dylan Sage on halfway. Senna back out there after a couple of minutes in the bin. He just got very frustrated and it's been a difficult weekend for Chucky really because he's been leading these youngsters and not a lot of experience around him. A final try would be wonderful for the Romantics and it goes out now to Dylan Peach. The young man, uh, he throws it back in field. Who wants it? It's still there for Australia. Release! Time is up. They haven't released, so... Leads They'll get the a crowds. final crack here. Release. Something for the fans. McNamara out to Quinn. Wait. Quinn, a little bit of a shimmy. Dive pass. Over the top it goes. Sits up brilliantly. And Simon Cannawell is in for the try. So they had the final say. Came way too late. But his third for the weekend puts a little more respectability into the scoreline. Oh, you love a consolation, especially for a young team. So the coach can go, well, we never gave up. We finished well. 14 of the points. You take them away while they're a man or two men down. They learn you can't be sitting in the bin and win a game against someone like South Africa. Good respect shown with the hugs on the field between the two teams. South Africans know where they are. They're the most experienced team in this series. The Aussies the least experienced, and they know these are the lessons that need to be learned. Have a look at some of these contacts. So Kennewell enjoying his time out there, learning all the time. And South Africa are through to the final, beating Australia in the semi-final by 26 points to 12. Australia unable to reach their home final in back-to-back -back years, but South Africa are through and they will take England on.